try to find out. Yeah, quickly. you guys can try to think a bit about this position. Uh, something is not working really well here because we are not supposed to be streaming on on this link. So while we figure out what the technical problem is and we <laughs> we fix it, you guys can think about this position. It's black to play and and win. And we'll probably be back. I'll I'll let you know if we change. Uh, we will if we'll change the link. Uh, if I'll stop the stream. Okay. So go ahead and think about uh, <laughs> this position. Black to play. Yes. Okay. At least we are live on Chess Twenty Four on the. Um, on the page so okay well that's something then shouldn't we be live on, on youtube as well we are but under banter blitz <laughs> ah well so let's see uh... it also looks like the um okay i th i think now we're we're fine yeah okay I can't quite see the YouTube. Uh, I'm just going to go check our link now. Uh, yeah, okay. we are. The link? Okay, I think everything's good now. <laughs> All good now, but I think we are actually live on on in two places in Banter Blitz and Great Games in the Benoni. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we like to overdo it a little bit. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> no, that's no. We are going fine now. Okay, so we can start then. Hello, everybody. Again, <laughs> sorry for for this uh, tiny problem. We have fixed it, and now now we can focus on, on our Benoni. Yeah. Yeah, and I can see the chat on YouTube as well. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, okay, just letting hi everybody know here. that, that everything... Hi, Tesh. Just Great. letting everybody know that our problem has been solved, so we can now look at this position. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Finally, and let's try to find a move for black. We start with a, a little warm-up. You're probably used to that already. I know Sophie is. <laughs> yeah. I'm still not sure if I got it though, even though I've had a few minutes to look at it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's something going on in the center of the board. Mm -hmm. I feel like something must be hanging. <laughs> uh, the bishop on b2 is not defended. Right. So there is an idea about uh, taking with the knight uh, yeah. somewhere and then threatening the bishop. So my problem right now is what if, ah, I think I might've gotten now. I think I'm gonna, because I was looking at taking on d5, mm -hmm. but I think I prefer taking on e4. I think so, yeah. My uh, knight. Yeah. Then I'm winning it. I mean, <laughs> I have a pawn and if he captures the knight, then I will capture the bishop on b2. So he should capture my bishop mm -hmm. on g7. Yeah. And then, ooh, then was what was my idea? Then my idea was to go uh, knight c3, which threatens the queen and also threatens to take on e2, so he would probably have to take back with the bishop, and then I could take that with my pawn and and I would have won a pawn, and the pawn on c3 might become a problem. Didn't, didn't you just lose a piece there on g7? What? Didn't you just lose the piece, the bishop on b on g7? Ah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <So> <laughs> okay, we're gonna try again. That's true. That's losing it. I am getting pawn for it, but that's not nearly enough. Let's see if we can. Then let me just see what else, because I thought that was such a good idea, but it's not. We're going to try it blue this time. Okay, let's try okay, slower. Go really slower, Sophie. Like to take this, yeah. maybe. And when he takes here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go slower. Yeah. 
maybe I could take the knight instead. Mm-hmm. Then I am taking a piece instead of nothing. <laughs> instead of nothing. <laughs> and then if he take uh, if he takes that knight, then I can capture the bishop in g7. And if he moves the bishop uh, away from g7, then I can move my knight. Yeah. You are completely I can go right. back to the center. Okay. This Let's was see. A... Did, people, did people have it in the chat? Nobody was helping you, eh? You didn't get uh, any No, nobody is helping me. No. They're just writing friendly, but not very... Uh... So you are the only one warming up. That's good. Yeah, I'm warming up, at <laughs> least. So this was a game of Tal, Sophie. Hold on. Bishop takes g7 was played, and now knight takes d2 with a yes. great position for black. And here yeah. probably queen takes d2 was so the it's best. just winning a pawn, but that's good enough. That's a great pawn on e4. Also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mm, queen d2 was probably best, but he played bishop h6 and game was soon over. He didn't even get the knight out because here there's bishop g4 and white will have to solve bigger problems than that knight on d2. Yeah, so, that seems dangerous. Yeah, this, this finished pretty soon. Bishop e3 was played and now knight f3. Here, oops. Bishop e3 and now knight f3 check. Okay, great position for black. I don't think uh, we need to see the rest of the game. We have seen the tactic. Knight e4 here because there's this bishop on b2 that's that's hanging. Okay, yeah. great. So let's move on to our game today. Uh, I have you know some... somebody in the chat asked what snake Benoni is? Do yeah, you know what... I saw what that I was that? going to answer that. Um, that's a different type of Benoni where the bishop doesn't get out via g7. And Gashimo was playing it a lot as well. Um, Black gets the bishop out on d6 very early. Okay. So he saves the, the, the d7, d6 move and then plays bishop d6, then bishop c7 and d6. It's a different way of playing the Benoni. It worked very well for Gashimov. I don't know if uh, it works well for everybody. <laughs> uh, the Benoni is quite difficult even with the bishop on g7. Uh, not sure how, how it is with the bishop on c7. But yeah, you and, can uh, <laughs> look at those ideas and, you know, if you like them, just from time to time uh, switch between them. Yeah. And then I just wanted to say that there are two chats going on because there's one on Twitch and there's one on YouTube. So we look at both of the chats. We are going to be looking at both. Yes, exactly. No, we are also in the Twitch chat. We also yeah. try to see that. Okay. So, yeah, I was going to say that I have some sad news for you guys today. You are expecting a great game in the Benoni. I have given you so many great wins in the Benoni, but I have to burst your bubble. The Benoni is not, <laughs> it's not that great. <laughs> Always that great game and those great attacks. And bad things happen to the black player in the Benoni as well. So today, I just want to prepare you uh, for these bad things that might happen to you in the Benoni. Yeah. It's going <laughs> to so. be a reality check. So yeah, today we're going to see a lost game in the Benoni for from Black. A loss from Mikhail Tal, so it's also no, a no. great <laughs> play. It's extra bad now. Uh, from Korchnoi. He lost to Korchnoi one, one yeah. great game, I have to say. It is a great game. Now, it doesn't take that away from the game. It's just um, not exactly what you'd like to see, probably. <laughs> I don't mean to uh, make you leave the Benoni. Don't think about that. I just want you to know that there are dangers and uh, you know, know what your opponent wants to do. So what we are going to do is start the game with the black pieces. We are going to see some options for black and then we are going to think about white. And I think at some point we are going to flip the board and see it from uh, white side um, because he does get a very good position uh, right after the opening, so really early, and we're going to try to find moves from that point on. So let's see. This was the move order that happened in the game. Now e6, okay, we take on d5, and here um, I think bishop d6 is the snake Benoni. I think so. I think this is the move order. Uh, we you'd have to check it out. 
but I think bishop d6 in this position. So now d6, knight f3, and g6. Okay, we have seen these lines. Um, we have actually seen a great game of Gashino, Gashimov here. He did want that game. It was a beautiful attack. So now we are going to see what happens um, from now on. Uh, the game of Gashimo was rook e8, and I think so few remember these ideas where he played uh, for the idea of bringing the rook quickly. Remember that? Yeah, rook a7 and rook e7. That was a beautiful game. Here, uh, white played bishop f4 and a6, and we saw that this move doesn't only prepare uh, b5, but also now b6 and the rook eventually uh got out via a7 something like this happened later on and it was a beautiful game if you haven't seen it i yeah. recommend you do sophie already knows it so <laughs> she's got a big advantage there um okay and here we'll see another idea tal played uh, knight a6 in this position yeah and yeah you know this idea sophie uh yeah seen... because they actually uh just when I, some like a month or one and a half month ago, when I wanted to play the Benoni, I looked mm -hmm. at some games of Tal and I saw that he very often play, uh, put his uh, knight on e6. So what's the idea of knight a6? Usually he goes uh, to uh, c7 with it. Yeah, that's right. The yeah. knight goes to c7 and then... And then b5 is uh, better protected. Correct. So we want this knight here and then push b5. Yeah. That's why the knight goes to c7 in many lines. Sometimes even the other knight goes to c7, like e8 and c7. Okay, so here uh, we will see that Kolchnoi plays this um, very smartly. Uh, he starts with the move h3. So we have seen why this move is important. Yeah, h3 stops the bishop from going to g4 and white is preparing to advance e4. Um, soon yeah oops let me just get some arrows he wants to play e4 and he wants to take this move uh bishop g4 away from black because if he played e4 directly then bishop g4 and there is a difference he can still play h3 of course but now uh, black removes this knight and rook e8 for example now we we attack e4 they play rook e1 let's say and what do we play here, Sophie? Uh, we play... <laughs> we... Let me just see... Uh, I was looking at b5, but it's not quite working. Okay, for everybody watching on Twitch, yes, we yeah. are learning the Benoni, Sophie has decided to give this opening a try. So we have been looking at some games, some classical games, some ideas. And today, unfortunately, we're looking at the loss. Yeah. <laughs> so not a win for black. So the not so great games of the... For, from black the side. Movie. It is a great yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. It still is. Okay, ideas, like uh, there's nothing... Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna look in the to... chat now. I'm gonna look in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Knight c7, oh, that looks logical. Knight c7 uh, looks logical, but if you think yeah. about all these ideas that we were discussing, no, there's nothing immediate here, but black's position is already comfortable. There is no knight on f3, you have control over the center, e5 is yours. Like, yeah, you are, uh, it seems like black is doing fine. So what ideas have we seen? Can you use any of them? Okay, I see knight d7. Uh, it's like super cool ideas. Which... Uh, yeah, I mean, I want maybe just playing for b5, going slow and playing knight to c7 and b5. Uh, knight d7 is an idea. C4 at some point. Yeah, that, I, that idea with c4 I always like. And yeah. uh, <laughs> everything goes well for black once you play c4 and knight c5. And I yeah. think you can already play that. Knight d7, I saw that suggestion in the chat and I think... Uh, knight d7 could also be played, right? We have the e5 square. Uh, knight d7, yeah. I think this is also a good idea here. Yeah, that's a good idea. There's knight d7 and knight e5. 
but you know if I'm allowed to play c4 right now I would go for c4 and put my my knight on c5 yeah and here for example bishop e3 they don't allow us to play uh, knight c5 but then we are still going to get to d3 queen d7 we can insert this move in between just to threaten uh, h3 and b5 at some point now we want to take the pawn wait the arrows take h3 and then we are also protecting b5 and we can follow yeah. up with knight b4 for example and this knight is usually uh, a happy piece on d3 yeah, uh, very uncomfortable for white. So I would say that here uh, black is doing fine. No? And for this reason, white doesn't play e4 uh, so soon because there's this idea of playing bishop g4 from black. So Kochna starts with the move h3. Okay, so now we go ahead and play knight c7. There was also rook e8 here. Um, can also be, be tried, no? If white's idea is to play e4, why don't we just play rook e8 first and then and then knight c7? The knight is still coming to c7. That's maybe something black would have tried. But knight c7 is not bad either, continuing the idea. And knight c7 also threatens to play b5, right? So I think this is uh, what Tal was thinking here, that b5 is coming yeah. next. So if his opponent plays a4, for example, then he's got time to play rook e8, no? And then e4 is still not possible. But, but, let's try to flip the board now and find a good move for white. Oh, it's Oof. going to be <laughs> hard. <laughs> so unusual. So is unusual, I know. Yeah, I I'm think... I'm just going to flip it. Uh, yes, myself. please. Okay. Okay, good move. Oh, right. Like a4 is not a bad move, don't get me wrong. a4 no, is a okay. natural move, but maybe we can do something better here with white instead yeah. of uh, defending. So, uh, I guess we played h3 because we wanted to play e4. Yeah. But um, it's not e4 is still not super well protected so i would be a little bit afraid of b5 b4 and then the pawn would be hanging mm -hmm. um but i guess that's what we want to play so i don't know if we could play rook e1 just to protect it a little bit better or um Oh, maybe we should try to. I'm just trying to think about what I find annoy, annoying as black. Try to uh, be aggressive on the d6 pawn. Play something like bishop f4 and then putting a knight on c4. Yeah, but then if b5 is played, the knight is not coming to yeah. c4. No, that's the. Yeah. I saw bishop g5 in the chat. I am watching the chat, but I'm, uh, Ooh, I'm waiting for Sophie to. See the chat. To tell me her ideas. So. <laughs> bishop G5, a lot of people are suggesting suggest Bishop G5. Yeah. Uh, ooh, yeah, sure. maybe. Not sure about Bishop G5, maybe, but G5. what about B4? Oh, it's just the same people repeating Bishop G5. Yeah, that's, that's why the... that's why I said <laughs> that I am watching the chat, so you don't have to. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, uh, protect E5 pawn. Uh, yeah, the E4, the D5, or maybe the D5 pawn? Maybe, but it's hard to... It is protected well enough for now. Like we could protect it by playing e4. So I the question is, e4. the question is, if you go e4, e4 looks very natural, right? But they yeah. play b5. So that is the big question. Does e4 stop b5 or can black still play b5 and he will be uh, doing fine? Okay, someone saying a4, a4 stopping b5. Why does a4 what, yeah. uh, a4 stopping b5? Yeah, we were discussing about a4. It's not a bad move. You can play it, but there's something better here. <laughs> I'm just going to show you, okay? And you tell yeah, me why b5 just, is not working. Yeah, okay. e4 is the right way to go. And what happens okay. if b5, right? That's the question. Yeah. So what happens if we play oh i'm just gonna see e4 b5 ah uh then we
Is it because we play? Is it because we can play e5? Yes. So yeah. e5 is the thing that you guys need to <laughs> remember all the time. Uh, have, yeah. Think about this move. Uh, e5 here hurts a lot, I think. Because white's point is that uh, they will follow up with d6 if pawn takes e5. Yeah, e5 has been suggested in the chat as well. Yeah, e5. True. So e5 does seem very uncomfortable in this position. Uh, you don't have to take on e5, that's true. Uh, but if you have to play knight e8, uh, this is already not what you wanted out of the Benoni. Right? No, I can I go rook e1, and I think this is still fine. And uh, whenever you they take on e5, whenever black takes on e5, white will, uh, will try to play d6. No? Yeah. <laughs> How can it hurt and if, if uh, black plays b4 now? In this position, do if they play b4. In this position. Do we put the knight in the center? I was thinking that knight e4 is an option because then we can yeah. follow up with d6. Uh, but we can also leave the f the diagonal for the bishop um, because we have this idea of attacking the rook on a8. So maybe we want to play knight a4 as well is an option here. Ah, uh, okay. Knight a4. Yeah, maybe because c5 becomes a weakness if we take on d6. Yeah. It makes sense to attack c5, and now when black takes on e5, c5 will be hanging as well. No? So maybe now one one idea for white could be to take on d6, followed by bishop e3. So we put pressure on c5. Yeah, yeah, the knight is usually not great on the rim, but here the knight on a4 is doing something. So I wouldn't say right, it's... on the what? On the ah, uh, rim is... Knight on the rim is square. Is that a4. how you say it in English? Yeah. <laughs> Because there's a Danish expression for it as well. I think it's uh... similar, probably. No. Yeah, similar. Just okay. So here, uh, e4 looks uh, like a very good move from white. Let's just go back mm -hmm. to seeing this from black's side. So now the threat is e5. No. Now the question yeah. is how to stop that. Um. What to do here with black? Rook e8 is uh, an option. I rook think. e8, I like rook e8. I think this yeah. is, I agree, this is an option. Uh, there are some suggestions of knight d7. Knight d7 is also an option and is the move that black played in the game. Knight d7? Knight d7, yeah, that's what he played oh, here. Okay. Maybe rook e8 is an improvement. And yeah. I'm not sure because the knight on d7 uh, didn't do much in the future, but of course you want to get to e5, so it could be an idea. You don't know when you are playing the game that the knight is not going to make it to e5. Okay, so here white goes rook e1. Everything very natural, but it all makes sense because rook e1 insists on the idea of pushing e5. Yeah. So again, if we play b5 here with black, the same idea of e5. Is going to happen okay even now because now we are not threatening the knight on f6 anymore but it's still if black plays uh, b4 we take on d6 yeah i think if b4 we can take on d6 yeah uh, for sure we can take on d6 yeah okay i'm just going to play this on the board pawn takes d6 can you see it sophie on the board yeah but maybe i'm thinking that maybe it's gonna be a problem because uh, pawn takes b2 in the end. I know After we're threatening we're threatening the queen as well. It's just it's a little bit uh, messy. Everything's hanging. Yeah, it gets messy. <laughs> it does get messy. Maybe it was a better option in this sense to get things messy, um, because in the game black was left without any active moves. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe That's here right. pawn takes c7, but I'm pretty sure that you see this during a game and it doesn't look so good <laughs> to play either. So here no. I think c takes b2, I can still take on d8. Yeah, because if we take the... You take the rook <laughs> and you take the rook <laughs> move the queen. Eight. I'm just uh. going to move my queen to a5, Sophie, and I'm going to have two queens. So we are looking at, at this. Are? 
if the, you take here, I'm going to take on d8. And yeah. if you keep taking, I'm just going to move my queen away. Uh, yeah, then I, I got a black got a queen, but lost the queen. As yeah, well. that's true. Yeah, <laughs> then it's so that's, so that doesn't look good. No, but queen no. takes c7 here can be played. You don't have to to take on b2, takes on c3. Okay, bishop takes, and now the pawn on d5 on d5 is quite dangerous. Of course, yeah. white is not worried about losing an exchange here because uh, he will take the dark square bishop. So yeah, that will be a lot of compensation. And so, if if we go back to e5, if black takes everything on e5, then white also wants to take everything on e5. <laughs> yeah. And now in the end, they have d6 and the bishop on g2 is open. So attacking the rook, then the knight is also hanging. Yeah. Ninety five. Very bad position I would say for black. And I'm just gonna calculate because uh so yeah, we got a knight and a bishop uh for the rook minus a few pounds. But it's yeah, I agree, I think it's going to be and the dark squares around the king. I think that's the biggest here. problem. Bishop h6 yeah. is coming next. Yeah, um, knight f6 and queen f3, and it's very dangerous. <laughs> doesn't look pleasant. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> no, but in the game, he didn't play b5. So someone's asking about knight e5. We'll see that. Um, okay, rook e1, and let's see what happens if knight e5. Well, if knight e5, this is definitely an option, and I was going to say uh, to, to show this uh, later. The thing is that here, um, white can take, no? And then f4 is, is going mm -hmm. to probably happen knight takes bishop takes let me know if you can see the line sophie i can, I can actually not see the line okay so let's just refresh here knight yeah five. Knight, knight take bishop take f4 yeah maybe bishop yeah. e3 and f4 here bishop e3 so that you don't have this bishop d4 again probably better than what happened in the game but still not very comfortable because our pieces are not um, are not really coordinated here, no? Not no. very okay, but still still fine for black. And here I suppose the idea was to play B five, was that it? Probably. And my idea was to go F four and E five. Always need to watch out for this. Yeah. Again, it's getting messy, no? Yeah. <laughs> Very messy. <laughs> Probably messy okay. is better than just uh, than just falling bad. into passive, than than being passive, because here um, Black was focusing on stopping this e5 idea, and he played knight e8, and I'm sure that this is a uh, move that you are not going to like. Uh, it's no. not a desirable Did Tal move. Play this? <laughs> Sorry. Did Tal play this move? Yeah, he did play this move because oh, he needs yeah. to. He really needed to stop e5, no? Yeah. And from now on, well, even this position, if we look at it, we can say that white, uh, everything has gone well for white. But we see that yeah. um, there were some mistakes in the game. And I think that um, black did play a little bit passive, no? We, this is what I wanted to show with this, that you shouldn't, should never play passive and fall into a, a position like this. So there what was... about f6, somebody asked? I think that's yeah. a good question. Like here, f6, no? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. what about f6 before knight e5? I think here. Uh, can you yeah, see the position, can... Sophie? Uh, f6 on the board? No, I cannot see. I cannot. Let's refresh that. f6. Sure, you can probably play f6. Uh, and you control e5. But then e6 is a square that you are going to give me. I'm going to play e4 for sure here. Nice. Okay, I'm going to stop b5. And maybe knight e5. But this position, we are going to see it also uh, a bit later. I was going to actually show this position uh, after <laughs> black white's next move. But this is similar, because here after knight e5, white can take. Yeah, and here we have to take with the pawn. If we take with the d-pawn, uh, then you'll have to watch out for the pawn on d5, yeah. which might advance, will be quite a dangerous pawn. And if you take with the f pawn, 
this is uh, very similar to a King's Indian structure, but in the King's Indian, you always have the rupture with e f5, no? There's a pawn on f7 all the time that you have, and you want to play f5 <coughs> in the King's Can Indian. Can we repeat who played the, um, this? Uh, Tal is playing with the black pieces in this position, and it was Kochnoi. Kochnoi with the white pieces, yeah. Kochnoi with the white pieces. Yeah. Yeah. So this position, do you have the position on the board, Sophie? Just checking with you because I know sometimes with, uh, it doesn't the refresh. the F line, the F6 the F line. line open? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the problem with this position is that um, it's quite bad for black in the sense that black will not have any active uh, options. There are no, no ruptures, white's controlling everything. And this is the kind of position that will be very difficult to play. Yeah. White has things to do, like... Um, for example, one thing I'm going to do is bring my knight to c4. I'm going to have my knight here at some point. For example, with knight b4, sorry, uh, knight b5 and then uh, maybe knight a3. Or, okay, knight b5, I'm going to also trade your knight. So how else can I do? Well, one thing I can also do is rook b1 and b4. This is a typical uh, thing to do for white and it can work here as well. And I'm going to bring my knight to c4, uh, probably a different route, uh, not b5, a3. But my queen is going to go to c2. And this will be a, a very pleasant position for white to play. The b5 will be open. Bishop is bad on g7, yeah. And the bishop on c8 yeah. cannot find anything to do. No. no. We don't find any counterplay. If this bishop stays on e3, f2 is defended, so it's it's quite a passive position. It's it's yeah. not comfortable to play. Well, let's see knight e8, which doesn't look good either, but we will see the game and see what happened here. Yeah. <laughs> well, here again, um, Kochner played uh, a very strong move. And we see it many times in the Benoni from White's side. He played bishop g5. And yeah. this move is meant as a provocation. We see it um, in many other positions. This is a Benoni. Someone's asking if it's a Benoni or a King's Indian. It's a Benoni. Uh, and bishop g5 is meant to force you to do something. No? Are you going to play yeah. f6? Are you going to ruin your structure? Are you going to give me the e6 square? Or are you going to put something in front and... Um, and then you won't have a five, then you won't have a square for the knight. Um, white is not interested in trading that bishop, but he will simply come back afterwards. He played bishop f6 and bishop e3. And now the bishop is a little bit awkward. On f6, no? On f6, yeah. yeah. This is usually a, an idea, a very nice idea from white. Here is where I was going to show you the same line that you were asking uh, about before with f6. And this is very, very similar. The knight is on e8, and now the bishop is on e3. That's the, the only difference. And now the same idea with rook b1. I'm playing b4. Now I don't even yeah. have to play a4 because b5 was not a threat anymore. So I'm going to play for b4 next and the c4 square. A very uncomfortable for position for black. Queen b6. Yeah. I yeah, guess that sure. closed center is not really what uh black ones no the only player wants no yeah you need to the drop d6 is just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's weak and you can white yeah. can attack it yeah with the knight on just imagine a knight on c4 after these two pawns are gone this pawn on b2 and uh, the one on b7 which will probably happen after b4 b6 takes takes the b5 will be open there will be a knight on c4 yeah queen b6 um b4 anyway no Someone was suggesting queen b6 here. Let's ah, yeah, there. because there's a, there's a pin. Mm -hmm. There's a pin on the pawn on c5. Yeah, I like this position. I think this is already great for, <laughs> for white, no? Yeah, I agree. Okay, queen b6 not here, but when? Before. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly when before, after bishop g5. Maybe, maybe after before the bishop was put on e3. Or maybe know. maybe it here after bishop. It doesn't make sense to put the queen on b6 as long as there's a bishop on e3. Maybe here after bishop g5. 
Um, ah, yeah. But then the bishop maybe goes to e3 and... No, no. but here there's... No, then b4, b2 is hanging. No, here there's a strong move. You guys find it. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> ah, we can... Okay, sorry. I'm just... I actually have it. Should I wait a few? Yeah, you can go ahead, Sophie. Can... It's okay. I think you I'm gonna... I think I, I don't mind. <laughs> I think I think I would. Oh, I actually don't have the position on my board, oh. but I would put the I would Hold put on. the bishop on, on e7, and then the rook is trapped. Bishop e7 like and this? the rook is trapped. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. I think you can insert knight a4 first, so you don't lose the pawn on a4. Yeah, protect the pawn. That's maybe a good idea. Yeah, just give as little material as possible, and then we can. Put yeah, the bishop, bishop e7. e7 exactly. Someone would say I had it as well. So yeah, bishop e7 will happen if queen b6. No, he went for bishop f6, which, okay, seems uh, also natural if you want to keep this structure. But then bishop e3. Yeah. White also has more space. This is a thing to remember that white doesn't want to trade uh, pieces. Black does want to trade pieces. We have less space and we haven't found good squares for the pieces yet. We would like to trade some, but white will not help us in our... I saw your uh, video on space advantage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I knew it. You know that, I, I, right. I, It's good to get it repeated. Like, don't exchange pieces if you have. If you have space advantage, advantage yeah. Yeah. Well, and here black goes rook b8. He keeps yeah. fighting for the idea of playing b5, which makes sense. A4. I think a6 is also a move that you'd agree with to play b5. Yeah. And now white goes bishop f1. So at all points, just trying to stop b5, controlling uh, black structures. And this is an important moment for black. Like, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do with our position? What should we play here? As black? As black, yeah. <laughs> you don't <laughs> like black's position anymore, so... <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> what happens? <laughs> I, I don't know. Can we still go for it? We cannot play b5 right away, but could we maybe... Uh, maybe we could go for... No, it still doesn't look too good. Uh, I was thinking about playing knight e5 mm -hmm. um, to offer some traits, but then if white... I'm just going to see if I can make some errors. You can also move if you want. I, I think you're... Uh, you should so be able to maybe if I take here, then f4, as we saw previously. Maybe it's not. It's like something good and something bad. So I'm not sure if it's if it ends up being a, a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, Same suggestion is here in Twitch. So yeah. I think we are we are answering that question. So if ninety five, knight takes e five. Bishop takes f4, yeah? Yeah. And I just saw I am I am rated uh, at uh, 1800 in classical chess, and I'm trying to get above 2000 in blitz, but it's <laughs> it's super difficult. I've been one game away from it two times this week, but it's just um, I, I think I get uh, nervous when I am about to reach that limit. Uh, yeah. You say we want to go for e ninety five. I think ninety five looks good, no? Um, yeah, I would agree. Queen c seven, knight c seven, knight c seven. We will see what happens in a moment. But ninety five, since we were also talking about trades, why don't we just offer a trade here? Uh, ninety five looks like a move that uh, we usually want to do. So the question was, what happens if knight takes e five? Sophie, let me yeah. know if you see the moves on I the board. See, I see it on the board, and yeah, I would take with the bishop, and then I would be a little bit concerned about f4. If f4, yes. Yeah, f4 is probably what white will play, and bishop g7. And we have seen this position many times, no? This is what we have to play in the Benoni. <laughs> yeah. Then maybe we play for f5 in this position. Yeah. This was an idea that. We have we have to watch out for e5, which luckily is well controlled right now. Yeah. So if that's good. not going to happen, we are going to play for f5, and at least in this position you have 
um, ruptures and you have some ideas. Remember, we were discussing this, that in the Benoni, you are really, really in a bad position when you are out of ideas, <laughs> especially active ideas. So this could be played. Uh, but the big question is what happens if white doesn't cooperate and doesn't trade pieces? Uh, as we were saying before, white doesn't want to trade. Yeah. So what happens if knight h2, for example, and then he wants to play f4 and kick the knight out, leave you with more pieces and... I was just about to say then we play c4, but that's just to <laughs> take a little bit of space. And yeah. I'm, I'm afraid c4 wants into f4. I and think then, so. But then I'm like, C pawn is a goner, but maybe yes. it's not a goner. <laughs> it's true. The C4 um, is a goner, but, uh, yeah, but you do want right to get now. something in exchange, no? Like yeah. uh, at least we attack E4. We pull an eye on C5. Yeah. I'm not sure if we if we do get anything here. It's probably a bit too optimistic. Um, so F4. Could we play uh, G5? Very or good, is that, Sophie. Is it? Is it? Very good, Sophie. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> I saw the idea in the last game. Or the yes, second yeah, game. we did see this idea yeah. in the last game. So g5, and again, uh, they can still play f4, but we again get some counterplay. If they play f4, we are going to take, and we have the g-file open now. So one idea could be, of course, we have to move the knight first, so knight g6, for example, and there's uh, something going on important have something going on king h8 rook g8 start an attack yeah. here the, knight, the, rook, uh, the bishop can go to h4 and some yeah. maybe definitely yeah yeah and then there is this idea of just going it's to not, change uh, <laughs> there's just somebody in the chat who doesn't play chess okay uh, <laughs> so be confused about the alphabet and numbers <laughs> so <laughs> that's how you speak chess yeah <laughs> So another idea here besides bishop h4 would be to weaken f4, Sophie, no? So like bishop yeah. t4 maybe, trade this bishop and, and now you get f4. That could be, that could be very interesting as well. So yeah. at some point, white will probably have to play f5, like maybe here, but then knight e5 and same idea. We want to play for king to h8, rook g8 and have something going on on the king side. Great. So I'm very happy you found g5 here, Sophie. Um, yeah. Why does it have to play a four, of course? Um, probably queen d2. And here, bishop d7, try to play for b5. And here I want to show you an idea that white can play for, so you're not surprised when you see this over the board. Uh, sometimes white allows you to play b5, but they will meet it with b4. So here, rook b1 is an interesting idea. Okay. Point being that if you play b5, he wants to take and play b4, and then things change and white can play uh, against this pawn on b5, like something uh, rook a1, rook a5 can come at some point to attack the pawn on b5. Not right away, but okay, you'll probably play c4 here. So the rook can move to a1. No? Yeah. This is a way to meet the idea of b5 for white. Um, Again, it's an interesting position, and I think this could be played for black. Definitely. Uh, well, you still have ideas here. No? Yeah. Okay, bishop f1, and here I think knight c7 was uh, a suggestion, and I said that we will see it in a second. The thing about knight c7 is that, yes, you are threatening to play b5, uh, but what Tal saw is that here white will play bishop f4, and now d6 is hanging. And you don't really want to play knight e5 and take back, have to take back with the pawn on e5. So you'll probably have to come back to e8, no? Uh, to yeah. defend e6. So this is kind of a waste of time. The problem is, again, queen e7, what will happen? What does white do here? Sophie's got it. I'm just, I saw, I got it, but I, I noticed last time uh, someone in the chat said that they wanted a little extra time. So I'm just going to give <laughs> oh, like all right. a few seconds, but I think I've got it. It's, <laughs> okay, uh, someone says it's, that it's, a sane uh, person won't play knight h2 after knight e5. 
Uh, well, but knight h2 is the best move in that position. Uh, that's a move that someone who knows that they shouldn't trade pieces will play probably. <laughs> so if you're just hoping uh, for them not to play knight h2, if they're a good player, they will probably find that move. <clears throat> okay. Are there any suggestions? Uh, e5, I think that's what I also want to play. Yeah. Uh, I want to play e5 and with the point that if black captures that pawn with the pawn, we can play d6. That's all correct. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and if we take with the knight, we will eventually have to take with the pawn. And then d6 is still coming. Yeah. Okay. So this happens if uh, knight c7, just bishop f4, and then you'll have to do something about the pawn. Knight e5, as was mentioned before, you'll have to take back with the d pawn, which is something not desirable in the Benoni. This is not what no. we are playing for. <laughs> we want to, to have a piece capturing on e5 yeah. uh, last. Okay, so now we've seen all these ideas, and uh, you will understand Tal's next move. He played queen e7. And since you have seen what happens with knight c7, you'll understand that queen e7 uh, prepares the move knight c7. So he wants yeah. to play knight c7 next and have the pawn on d6 defended and not fall for any e5. Okay, so let's see what Y did here. He played knight Why would that not be. Uh... Sorry? Uh, but. Once black would play knight c7, yeah. are we not ready to play e5 again? Uh, well, but I think now e5 is very well protected. Oh, yeah, unless so there are some tactics. Play. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, maybe there are some tactics with a 4. So then black can just capture <laughs> the piece. Yeah, I still will have to calculate a 4, no? Um, bishop somewhere. Yeah. But I think uh, it should be quite safe. Yeah. In that position. Well, knight d2 was played, knight is going to c4. c4, yeah. Knight c7, also knight d2 in order to open um, the way for the f-pawn. So now white goes f4. Uh -huh. So what does he want to do with f4? Probably f5 or no. e5. e5, yeah. <laughs> e5, okay. So he wants to play e5. Again, same ideas, same uncomfortable yeah. ideas with uh, all the files opening. So what should we do with black? But is e5 a threat yet? Mm. e5, pawn take. Yeah. Pawn take, knight take. It's a little bit uncomfortable maybe because... Mm. There is uh, some hidden idea uh, after e5. Some what ideas? A hidden idea. Okay. Uh, okay. There's a suggestion of playing b5. And yes, we will see b5 in this position. Also, That's what Tal and King in the YouTube chat are suggesting rook e8. Rook e8. Um, so you guys want to defend e5? Is that it? That's even better. And I, I assume that's the point <laughs> in putting the rook there. Uh, and then there's seven yeah. being suggested. I like this bishop g7 because that's yeah, looks then like it's not getting kicked out with e5. I think bishop g7 yeah. was the best try here. We have an, an uncomfortable position, but uh, okay, here it's, we need to defend basically, <laughs> defend well and make sure that uh, e5 is not going to happen and maybe f5 will be played at some point. So I think bishop yeah. g7 has a double idea, not just getting out of e5, but uh, creating some some kind of uh, counterplay at some point. And I will show you why e5 was such a great threat. I'm not going to show you the continuation here. Um, let's say that white goes b uh, knight c4 here. Oh, this could be an idea and then uh, you'll probably, uh, you've probably seen this in some other games that when b5 is played, this knight sometimes goes to a5. Uh, that's a direct threat. That's right a direct there. threat, yeah, with knight c6. Hmm. Again, 
difficult position, but what can we do? We are playing the Benoni. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be <laughs> flowers and yeah. No, rainbows. <laughs> Rainbow. no, 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 no. no. For that, uh, yeah, it's not the Benoni. Ha. Huh. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> so, okay, this could have been played. Um, yeah. Maybe you can sacrifice the exchange just to get some counterplay, like with b4 here. Maybe you can yeah. play for this with black. Um, but let's see what happens. Sorry? Yeah, it's, yeah. Knight c6, let's, let's no? see what happens. Yeah, yeah of course. Knight c6 yeah. is coming. Uh, but maybe we get some counterplay with, with black here. If we take b2 as well. Okay, wishful thinking. But <laughs> I know uh, it's difficult to get into this position in an actual game. Uh, difficult position for black anyway and now um, we have seen where things went wrong queen e7 was perhaps not probably not the best move there and knight e5 as sophie suggested was a very good idea knight e5 and g5 very nice fight yeah. but here let's see if b5 no and from this point point on i think it's safe to flip the board and see how white won this because after b5 white gets I yeah, white gets a nice. I'm effect. actually seeing this from white side already. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, that's so you don't side. need to flip anything. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so now it's just we're just gonna win this with white. Uh, we're going to get a great position. E5. Okay. Uh, yeah. It will still take some time to win it, but this, uh, this yeah. the, the advantage is great. And what's the point of e5? And why was it important to have a knight on d2? Uh, well, because when they take, you are saying that e5 is not well defended and d6 cannot be played. That is all true. But here there is this strong move, knight e4. Um, threatening. Threatening d6. Yeah. So here, I don't know what, what black can do. Um, I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for black. Um, he it's played queen d8. <laughs> it's going to be something. It's going to be very difficult here. He played queen yeah. d8 just to get out of the d6. Um, yeah. Knight e8 is probably an idea that can be played, but I don't believe that knight e8 can actually save this. Mm. Uh, still, knight takes f6 uh, will be played. No, we remove the Benoni bishop with white. Yeah. Knight takes d6 in between move. And then take on f on e5. Those pawns are just not looking good for black. No, no, no. Right now. This didn't go well for black. No, definitely not. This was a bad day for Tal. And now the yeah. idea of pawn takes e5 is that this knight on c3 is going to jump to d5 if the knight moves away from f f6. But Tal did uh, did defend very well here, so he did not make uh, it easy for uh, white. There's a suggestion of b takes a4. Um, not sure if here, because now the knight on f6 is hanging, so black needs to do something about that. But b4 is what he played. And it's a very strong move uh, in this position, because he doesn't allow okay. the idea of knight d5. No? Uh, look at this, knight d7, uh, white can take once, and knight d5, and this knight is coming to e7. I don't think this is going to be very pleasant. But without the black squared bishop, it's going to be really really, hard really bad black. okay you can take this pawn but look at this bishop h6 the knight is jumping to e7 i don't know it's really uh really have a really bad position so after b4 knight d5 at least now black trades this bishop uh, this knight sorry <laughs> queen takes and bishop b7 yeah queen d2 and queen d7. As I was telling you, Tal defends very well because he always looks for activity. So queen d7 is meant, um, well, he wants to play queen c6. No? It's meant to go to c6 and then maybe something is going to happen <laughs> along this diagonal. <laughs> it looks a little bit optimistic. So. Yeah, but what can you do? No, You have to take your chances even in, in this yeah, position. Yeah, of course. Of course. Have I would have, yeah. have, to have done the same. No, I have won so many games from that position that I still have hope. <laughs> somehow uh, maybe my opponent will make a mistake but he was playing Korchnoi who was a very strong was a very strong yeah. player so king h2 he's not in any hurry that's just some prophylaxis against uh, this idea of queen c6 so now black goes b3 
again some idea against the, the pawn on a4 always looking for something just a little something uh, but white's mm. not very worried about that he wants to play for the pawn on c5 and now you'll see that bishop c4 is also an idea no? what does he want to do play along this diagonal maybe rook f1 yeah. this pawn on f7 maybe bishop h6 or maybe transfer the queen to the king's side he played bishop c8 continue the plan and now rook b4 and white has to do something and in the game he took on e6 simply removing the knight because this knight was defending all the dark squares around the king and now he can start uh, creating threats around here so bishop yeah. takes e6 and there we go bishop h6 rook e8 and now we play queen g5 yeah we want to play queen f6 not very it's a simple plan but it's uh looks like a good plan though it is a simple plan but i told you that tal is not uh giving up easily so he plays um, rook e4 somebody asked i was actually why not queen c6 after the king moved to h2 okay let's i guess the, the the bishop could have gone to g2 to protect everything yeah but maybe we can go back and and show it yeah sure yeah. we can do that queen c6 well here bishop g2 but also i'm thinking that if since the king went to h2 my bishop can go to c4 which seemed to be i could just go anywhere yeah almost except for e2 <laughs> except for e2 yeah the bishop c4 i think since that was our idea before we can do this and defend it was important to have c1 uh, h1 defended the yeah. rest is is under control yeah yeah and now let's see uh rookie four so he wanted to play queen f6 i was saying here queen f6 is coming and mate on g7 yeah okay let me <laughs> it's having troubles with the arrows and here tal goes rook e4 again defending yeah, okay. actively no yeah yeah suddenly he's i mean he has not a bad not a good position but he did manage to get some activity at least yeah out of nothing well okay. it's not is really that much e2, uh, a serious threat i don't know maybe it you is because me. the queen can go to it looks like it's uh, i mean if if black could play rook e2 directly mm -hmm. then uh no matter where the king would move we could put the queen on either can I draw arrows? Yes, please. <laughs> so if I want to play this move, and if black uh, put his king here, for example, we want to put the queen on d4. And if he goes in the corner, then this bishop, it looks like it's a pretty th serious uh, threat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Is he going to? Is going to be checkmate, or maybe he's going to sacrifice the queen? You don't want that. No? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. we don't want that. Okay, so white should do something about that. So what should we do? What are we going to do here with white? Yeah, I'm just trying to. Uh, there's a. You can just delete them all. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> Still have one there. There's a tiny recycle bin that you can use on the side. <laughs> like this. Discovering the platform. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just trying to remove. There's like one blue one I can't get rid of. Okay. No, that's the last move. Ah, that's that was the last move. <laughs> I'm just trying to do this. So we could protect it by putting a rook in between. Then there's no check anymore. And you are right. <laughs> rook f2 yes. is the move here. Just a tiny prophylaxis. <laughs> yeah. There's a g4 idea here suggested. Uh, I don't know. Rook e2 doesn't look like a good idea to allow. I don't think you want to allow rook e2 and queen d4. Uh, you're not going to get mated, but here black's position starts looking really, really good. Eh? Rook e2 yeah. and king g3 is the idea, but then what if queen... Where do I want to go? d4, e4, um, e4 to threaten oh, can queen you, uh, uh, Can you refresh yeah. uh, our board? Yeah, like this. Okay. And queen e4. Oh. I don't think you should yeah. allow this in a game. This looks oh. uh, terrible maybe i don't know if it's losing yet 
But somebody is checkmating for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you don't want to allow this. Like look no. at the move, the look at the position after rook f two. Nothing is there for black. So yeah, this rook f two is definitely the move here. So queen f six is again the threat, and now black can only play a five. This is the only uh, defense. He wants to defend with queen d seven. Uh. Just bring the queen back and defend g7, which is actually what happened. Queen f6, okay. queen d7, and now we take this pawn and we want to play rook to c7. Big threat, rook c7. So again, only moves here for black, rook c4, forcing some trades. And now white needs to find a way to make progress. And he finds a very nice way to do so. Um, so what does he want to do? Because with the queen and the bishop, he's not going to mate black anymore. He's going to need the rook. And we saw that the rook on the c file was very strong before. Yeah, rook on c7. Rook on that c7, good... I know. Yeah. <laughs> but you cannot do that right away. No, I know. <laughs> That's not how the rook moves. <laughs> no, and, uh, and you cannot go to f1. That's what I mean. There's a bishop on c4. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going defending. to be... We should put it to f3 and then c3 and then c3 and then to c7 um that can be done rook f3 and rook c3 uh he play rook d2 and he wants to play rook d1 and rook c1 a bit more complicated yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, the idea is similar he probably had the point with that yeah the point is that he wants to keep an eye on d6 as well and yeah. maybe threaten to play d7 at the same time when when the queen moves away so now bishop e6 happened, rook d1, following the plan, and here comes queen a7. It's still not easy. Queen a7, black's playing for oh, tricks. But, yeah, because I was be like, if you can play d7 now, but then queen <laughs> a, uh, f2. Queen f2 is something you don't want to allow. King h1, no. check, you're losing the rook, and then d7. Yeah, maybe we are, are because it's... Uh... He has to take with check, but then, but then he has uh, perpetual. Well, yeah. At least a perpetual, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little at least a perpetual there with queen f two, which is something that we don't want to allow. So here, yeah. Korchner repeats the moves. It's also move forty. So maybe we have a few suggestions in the chat, but also oh, I have to. Okay, okay, maybe we I'm should just do the here. ending because then I can, uh, because I have to leave in five yeah, minutes. Yeah, I know. So let's that's why the, I'm just, the ending uh, of this game. Okay, so people ha are suggesting something here. Rook where? Rook d2, that's what he played, but that's a repetition. Do you guys have a suggestion here after queen a7? h4 h5 h4 queen f2 still no ah with the rook on d2 maybe with the rook on d2 maybe you can play for h4 h5 since black doesn't have uh, anything yet maybe you can do that yeah for sure okay yes that's correct is it twitch the chat? yeah see, the, the twitch, twitch channel chat has, has it rook d4 King. King wow, G2 nice. is suggested on that's... on YouTube, but Rook D4 is a Rook very D4 nice is move. Eh? The... Right, nice. Very nice. And you want to play D7. So you're yeah. Now that's also... a threat. Yeah, that's a big threat. So now he needs to go back, and now the suggestion that you guys were giving with H4 works really well. Oh, H4, H5. You want to create some more weaknesses here on G6. And then there is this move g4 that he played that also works really well. Same ideas. Yeah, that was suggested. It was also suggested. I I didn't see that. But... Uh, I, I think a, a few moves ago, so it was an idea. It was yeah. Uh, it's there, floating yeah. in the air. You just need to find. <laughs> I I don't know what it yet. How is uh, g4 instead of rook d2? Uh, but rook d2 had to be played, no, because queen f2 was yeah. a threat. So, yeah. Okay, so now he goes a5 and he wants to create some counterplay with the a pawn. Just a4, a5, yeah. a3. And now you're going to love this. Maybe you have seen this idea before. 
Uh, for example, pawn takes f5 does work, but you'll have to see a lot. I'm um, just going to briefly show you this line. You'll have to see this in advance because now, uh, let's say you want to play rook c4 no? and rook c5, and then queen a7 is again coming. No? With queen f2, now rook c5 has to be found. And here <laughs> a4, and there is still something going on for black. But now e6 uh, kills it all. And the point is that uh, we want the bishop to move, bishop takes e6, and now our queen is open and defends f2, so we can finally uh, play rook c7. That's a smart point. That's a smart point, but it's... Uh, and he cannot play the rook because of uh, queen f8. Yeah, Yeah. there's the queen f8 mate. This did not happen in the game. Um, it's a very complicated line, and Kochnoi just finds a very easy and beautiful plan here. Maybe you've seen this before? Queen G king g3, and guess what? The point is to go to g5. <laughs> the king is safer now on h4 than on h2. There are no other threats. Activate the last piece. <laughs> Activate the last piece, no? And now king g5, and he's basically preparing d7, which didn't work before uh, because the king was too far away, but now he wants to take... Uh, yeah, he actually wants to... No, he wants to play d7 right away. Hold on. There was this idea that d7 and now my king is close to to the pawn with the king on g5 because here if we play d7 hold on black can take and we have to take with the pawn and then he stops the pawn with rook d8 yeah so now with the king on g5, this is not possible anymore, and we are ready to play d7. Okay, here black took on g4. He played bishop d7, and now comes the last idea, rook c4. Again, this mo this rook has passed through all the the squares that were forbidden. <laughs> yeah. And rook c7. And a very beautiful threat that if a3 takes, this was the game. Queen takes and e6. And then there's a mate happening on, on g7. Here, I think, is where uh, black resigned. And I'm just going to briefly but show it's, you. It's, uh, it's, it's quite on, on, on a few moves, it depends, right? Because Yes, because like the pawn is on a3 pawn, as well. Yeah. Uh, for example, here, queen a7, you still have to find a good move, I think, which is queen e5, and not allow any checks. Yeah. And now is when it's really over e7 and yeah. it's mate yeah it's nothing to do about that nothing to do anymore yeah it was a very the pawns beautiful game. Been on c file, so they would go down with check maybe <laughs> but, yeah <laughs> no 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 pawns on the c file no yeah this was the game i hope i it haven't was a beautiful uh... <laughs> game, even though it was uh okay but black did make some mistakes no and we learned that we yeah. need to stay active uh, at all moments with uh, with black in the benoni we shouldn't allow these things to happen. And I think the, the turning point was uh, somewhere, let me just, here, no? With queen e7, where black would have gone knight e5, and we were discussing this position. Yeah. Someone was saying and knight d2 yeah. here. Rook e8 also at a point, at some point. Earlier, no? That could have been a, yeah, earlier, an idea. Be, yeah. yeah yeah play this position with g5 yeah yeah okay i know so if you have to go so if there yeah, are any no, just, just quick to say, to, i'm gonna leave but that we do uh are we gonna stream next friday i think so if you are available yeah yeah uh, we... most fridays yeah so uh we normally have the lessons and Luca streams a bit more often yes i do stream a yeah. bit more often uh i do stream in spanish uh, that's the <laughs> if you guys know Spanish, <laughs> please come uh, come by and say hi on Tuesdays. And next week I'm going to be doing a stream and on Spanish in, on Friday as well, Friday night at 8 p.m. and on Tuesday at 8 p.m. C C E S T as well. So weekly Benoni shows. I'm not sure if we are going to keep looking at the Benoni for much longer. Uh, maybe Sophie's getting tired of that. 
But I think uh, <laughs> I will prepare a small test for her. Let's see how she does and how Ooh. you guys are doing. <laughs> <laughs> a test, okay. Well, I have to go, but I will look forward to next stream and uh, and, and maybe even a test at some point. Yeah, that's a test at some point. And we are on Instagram. So yeah, please uh, follow us there. Uh, follow coaches and make sure to go to coaches. We have some great coaches there. I'm one of them, yeah. so please go ahead and and check us uh, check out the website. So thank you very much, thank you, Sophie. We have to cut it short today. Yeah. Uh, Sophie has to go, but I will talk to you soon. Thank you all. Bye.